recording. Perfect. Good morning, everybody. My name is Duni Cozy Gay. I'm the Deputy Director of Communications for the Bureau of Economic Development. I want to first start with thanking all of you for being present for today's webinar. Um, we are really working hard and working collaboratively with so many partners to make sure the Emergency Rental and Utility Assistance Program is a success. And by that, I mean that we get the information to the people who can benefit from this program, who we oftentimes are not able to reach because of where we are. So the strength of this program and the success of our work really truly depends on the um, way we engage our partners. And that extension begins with um, everyone who's here today. So I wanna say thank you and how much I appreciate you all making time for and being tuned into the work that we're doing. Um, I'll uh, share a little bit of the agenda with you today. Um, <clears throat> We have, um, we're going to make introductions, obviously, talk about the program, the emergency rental assistance program, and um, go do an overview of our community partner roles. Um, you can read all the dot points I won't read to you, but um, in short order, we have quite a few things that we're going to be covering today. So um, be captive, um, drop your questions in the chat, raise your hand. Um, with the little button if you have any questions or if you're really feeling something that we're saying then go on and give the applaud button a a, a push too because it's always nice to get some kind of energy and kudos even if it's um digitally um we appreciate every bit of support that we can get um please mute your phone if you're not speaking and um all of us will take uh, some time to walk through some of um, the information that you saw on the previous slide. Um, again, my name is Duni Cozy Gay. I'm going to be your facilitator for the day and talk to you a little bit about communications. Um, I would like to turn it over um, to Carl, Rex, and Julie, who will introduce themselves, and then we'll move into um, the next slide. Carl? Hey, good morning, Carl Braley, Deputy Director over here at the uh, Department of Planning and Development. And thank you all for participating in both our, uh, our current programs and the previous offerings that we've had. And we've been highly successful because of your participation. We're going to try to be brief to get to your questions and uh, your responses. Rex. All right, so I'm walking through the, uh, can you go right to the first slide if I'm walking through the first grouping here? Um, I'm sorry. Yep, that's Rex, correct, Carl. Yeah, if you could go gonna... back to the previous slide. Thanks. Um, yeah, and just to give you a, a quick overview, um, what we've looked at is the renter market here in uh, suburban Cook County. Uh, the resident, the residents in base here is about 43% of the residents are renters, 64% uh, of which are low income, and that's to read everything continuously. But we think about 50, 56,000 people are at risk of eviction based on our analysis, based on their incomes, the amount that they're paying for the uh, units. And then um, you should know that our program has assisted about 7,000 people during our first round. Ida has a complimentary program ongoing and they probably have done close to 12 to 13,000 and counting uh, for suburban Cook County. So people have the eligibility to go with us or with Ida. We all work together to try to make sure that there is a, uh, a source for funding for anybody in Cook County who needs the funds. Um, having talked to the courts recently, they believe that the moratorium on rental eviction is the enforcement of them. Uh, will resume on October the 3rd, but we do know that there is active filings of evictions in the courts and reviews that have been ongoing um, for a couple of months now. Uh, we don't know the full pace of this, and we're trying to get a better understanding and work directly with the courts to figure that out, but eviction filings are ongoing. It's really the enforcement of the sheriff coming out for that component part of the eviction, where they remove the families that has been on hold for the most part. As you look at the um, Overall program assistance, this is very similar to the program that you all are familiar with we did in round one. Uh, basically, we're paying unpaid rent back to March of 2020, and they were also allowed to pay three months of forward rent for families uh, who are at risk of their housing stability elements. 
We can now go up to 18 months of assistance when we utilize both ERA-1 and ERA-2. Um, that includes both the past due and the forward component. Uh, we put a new cap on the overall program. It's $25,000 per round now. So ERA-2 only would be $25,000. And then the combination of ERA-1 and 2 funding will encompass both caps. So we got $40,000 for anyone who's utilizing both sources of funds. And we had a $15,000 cap on our previous round. Thus, the $40,000 just straightforward. On the utility assistance side, just going to say it very straightforward. They get to pick two utilities in this particular round. We believe that gas and electricity are the ones that we will fund. And now we're going to fund um, up to the amount that's due. So we won't have a cap on utilities. Utilities that came into about 3% of our current offerings, uh, we thought was really low. We had a cap a little over $1,000. Uh, we still have some people who needed um, assistance, and we think we can cover this component of all utilities that are owed uh, without any uh, major dent on the amount that we're funding on the award side for our rent. Um, as we look at the as we look at the expenses that are eligible under this particular round, it's a couple of differences. Uh, under ERA2, which is what we'll be operating 99% of which after October, we can now pay relocation expenses for people who are moving to stable environments. Um, so if they've got an application fee, they got a down payment, they got a security deposit, um, utility connection fees, we can now take care of those. Uh, inside of it. A little bit more work and hand-holding on those type of applications may not be as quick as just a straight funding of rent, but we're able to look and consider all those expenses now. The uh, temporary housing model that we we're now allowed to do is the uh, hotel motel stay, which has a cap of $1,389, which is we think is a stable rate. Once you get past that 29-day rate with uh, hotels and motels, you got to go to a, a fixed rate. This would be the number that we'd be uh, able to pay up to. If there are any eviction, uh, they get all the same benefits as we've already talked about, but we'll also be able to pay legal costs uh, for the court and then the, um, the late fees. And the legal costs, it would be their submission fee uh, for the court component part. Household eligibility requirement basically remains the same. Uh, we're going to get into prioritization in a couple of seconds too, but they got to they have to live in suburban Cook County, and they have to be a renter. Can't do anything on the mortgage side with this funding. Ida has a specific fund that they will be announcing for mortgage payments in October. Uh, the rent utility obligation is pretty much straightforward. They got to have a lease at that particular property and a utility bill for that residence in the name of the adult party. The lease should be uh, in the six month variety or greater. And then we are looking at expired leases for tenants who landlords won't issue a new one because they've been behind, which is the case in, in probably 50% of the cases uh, that we see so far right now. Unemployment um, hardships, I'm sorry, hardships due to COVID will allow you to move up in priority. Uh, the basic requirements here is that you have to be unemployed for about 90 days. Anybody over 90 days is uh, a higher priority. And then incomes, while well, 80% is the cap AMI, 50% and under receives a priority. And then we also are looking for folks who can show that their income has been reduced across those periods. Uh, homelessness moves you to the top of the list and housing instability, which means if you have more than two persons per bedroom in your house, so you're living without utilities or the landlord isn't providing the necessary services to make a stable household, those are also priorities that you can list. Okay, thank you very much, Carl. Um, so my name is Rex Lewis. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to cover a few key points regarding uh, information related to the marketing and outreach role of our community partners. So on Tuesday, we dove uh, deeper into the application portal and focused on e eligibility and documentation requirements. Today, our focus is on how to increase awareness about the program and how to help make that connection from eligible households in need to the support 
uh, that we're offering. So four key components of the marketing and outreach role are going to be first to familiarize yourself with uh, our updated marketing toolkit, which we're going to provide uh, to you in a, in a number of links, and you'll be able to find um, in emails from us as well as uh, here on this webinar, which will be made available to you. Uh, next is to get familiar with the FAQs. So um, you know, familiarize yourself with the ins and outs of the program so that you can answer the general questions that you're going to receive from tenants and landlords. And then lastly is to actually start raising awareness through co uh, and connecting applicants to the portal and other support services. So this is going to be in two main ways, um, you know, physical events such as um, pop-up pop events, ad campaigns, canvassing, things like that, and then also through use of social media and phone banking. Here is the uh, updated information on our call center. So for ERA2, the call center is going to be run by Yardi, which is the same company that uh, hosts the application portal. So this will be the phone number that um, that we are going to advertise. So please, uh, you know, take a screenshot, put it in your cell phone, jot the, jot the number down. Obviously, once again, this will all be provided to you, but this is going to be the number where the majority of our applicants who have questions and inquiries regarding their applications are going to go to receive that assistance. Uh, from there, if the questions are more uh, service and support related, then the, the ERA call center hosted by Yardi will transfer those uh, those cases to the either the Catholic Charities Call Center, which can then uh, place certain cases to the support organizations that they need, uh, or directly to those organizations. So once again, updated phone number and updated operating hours to be aware of for the Co for the new Cook County ERA Call Center. All right, here are our key dates and the program timeline. So we have the webinars, which are getting knocked out this week, and an additional webinar that's going to occur next week on the 22nd. Now, this webinar, the purpose is to inform uh, about the program and how you can help market it for organizations that are, are not our community partners um, in the way that you are all uh, supporting our program. But these are folks who are in the communities or uh, members of the Cook County government that are going to forward on our marketing material and try to make themselves available to just raise awareness. Uh, next week is going to be an important week because that is when we are uh, asking you to get organized and begin the planning for all the marketing and outreach preparations uh, and activities that you're going to do. And our application window is from October 4th to October 29th. So, um, Beyond that, from November through February is where we anticipate HAC will be processing applications, the call center will be continuing to support cases, and uh, we will continue to follow up with communications with applicants. Thank you, Rex. Um, so I'm going to dive in a little bit deeper on what does that mean for you to spread the word and um, start getting organized around outreach and communications. So um, first and foremost, this is a partnership um, with the Housing Authority of Cook County. They are the administrator of the program. For those of you who are returning, you kind of have that familiarity with the Yardi system that we're using. They're the ones hosting the application portal and um, that Housing Authority of Cook County is involved. For those of you who are newer to the party, um, that those are two important pieces. One, because you will likely get a few more questions than other organizations who are helping us because of the level of involvement you have with us. And we want to make sure you know where to field phone calls and um, questions that you might get about, you know, what's the status of my application. So some things that we did differently this time around is to really try to anticipate and pull from what happened our first and second round um, to build out an FAQ and a communications toolkit that could really be informative and serve as your go-to to address certain topics that might come up. So we did a lot of forecasting and um, really just tried to rely on all of the queries we got this last round so that we can try to foreshadow, most importantly, get ahead of some of the questions people will be asking. So one of the ways we did that is by making sure we have a dial-in number the second is that we are going to 
modify the way the Yardi system communicates with the applicants. So rather than just send them one blanketed, thank you for applying, check back for updates. The idea is that we want, we're um, gonna re communicate with them um, with a cadence so that they know one, we, we're still processing your application. We didn't forget about you. We understand there's gonna be a little bit of time between when you applied and when um, you receive your approval in the next steps. Um, but the idea is to keep the lines of communication open. Um, so I just wanted to put that out on the forefront because that was a big part of our work last time around. And so that, that communication is gonna happen before we launch, during the application opening period and the post period. So um, you've taken a huge step today. The fact that you showed up shows that you're getting organized and kind of wrapping your mind around what's coming up next. So please start planning with your organization um, how you're gonna execute this time around, um, how you can personalize it so that people are familiar um, with both um, this program, but also because you're the trusted voice for the constituents um, that you serve. So personalizing it so they have that brand recognition and organizational familiarity is gonna be pretty critical to this because you're they trust you and, and if they trust you, then they're likely gonna say, okay, this might actually be something that I can do that, that will benefit me and um, I can rely on this organization that, you know, hold my hand a little bit if I need it or just go to them and they can serve as a sounding board. And then we have our kickoff week. We're going to launch our so social media blitz, um, host and publicize our outreach events, but most importantly, be on hand to answer questions, connect people to the resources and encourage applicants to gather their documents. A huge part of the success of an applicant is making sure they have all of their ducks in a row. So that paperwork that's necessary, all of those things matter. And we create it as we we try to do, we, we really want you to be able to plug and play. So we've put together a checklist copy for you to use and repurpose for social media for flyers and we've even added some new stuff to the mix but we'll get to that in a second and then of course we want to finish strong um, reminding people to apply to keep at it if they need help you know we have enough supports in place to get them through the application process and monitor the ebb and flow so last time we had a few organizations um move quickly to do a really big push and get some ad buys out there and billboards. I'm hoping we can do more of that early on though, so that we can really make the biggest splash that we can. So um, those of you who are planning on doing some kind of billboard or um, creative outreach, I'd love for you to drop in the chat what you're thinking about and what you're planning on doing, um, just so that others can see what you're gonna be up to this time around. Um, but again, we want to finish strong. So again, using that FAQ to answer questions, connect people to resources, making sure we have that Yardi number, um, like Rex mentioned earlier in our phone so that we can hand it out to folks so they can really go right to the source and, and navigate the sales. Um, and then really just encourage applicants to be as prepared as possible. Next slide, please. And while we're waiting on the next slide to transition, I'll go through, um, we, as I said, we have um, a pretty robust toolkit for you. So we have your media toolkit that, again, has all of the pre-written copy for you to use. All you have to do is plug and play. Um, we've even put together a, pro a proposed um, calendar for you, which I'll share a little bit later on. Um, but put the key dates on your calendar so that you aren't missing any um, dates to get information out. We want you to use every channel that you can think of from Facebook to LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, you know, your social media poison, use it. Um, TikTok even, if you feel like you, you're getting creative, I love just that the message is going to be circulating and that's what we're all here for. So use this um, as a creative outlet, if you will, for you to um, start talking about the program, reach out to your networks far and wide, you'd be amazed. You might think, oh, let me just target this group of people, but you'd be amazed um, at your business chambers or just some of the businesses or people in your lives who could really use this information. So don't leave anyone out. Share the information far and wide and often. Maybe even challenge yourself. I'm going to make sure 10 people a day know about this program and ask them to share with 10 people they know. But the whole goal of this is to just saturate the market with the information. 
Um, get on the phones if, if you can. If you're not a digital person, that good old fashioned grassroots popping up at a community event or having a hosting your own pop up event to spread the word. We're still early enough in the school year where they're back to school nights or just different things happening in the community um, that you can maybe even attach yourself to and set up a table to distribute information. But um, one of our organizations organized a ground campaign. And so what we did for you this time came up with door hangers so that you can leave behind information and um, really just wanted to make your canvassing efforts a little bit more efficient. So in addition to the flyers that we created, we've got um, door hangers and clipboards to record questions. So you can get out there and 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 really um, hit the ground running, literally. <laughs> Um, and then notify your local press contacts. This is good neighborhood news. This is good national news. We will do, be doing the same at the county, but do not feel like, oh, the county's got that covered. I'd love for it to come from every person who's on this call today and the people who weren't able to make it on this call. Tell everyone, because if they hear you talking about it, they'll recognize the value and they'll talk about it and make sure people know about this. This is one of those few times where um, it's not a bleed lead story. It's really just us trying to get a resource to help people who um, could really benefit from this space. Um, put together a marketing outreach checklist for you. Again, we really try to make this user friendly. We recognize we're asking you to take time out of your lives to you know, help us promote something that we built. Um, but we're stronger together. And so one of the ways we can keep your strength up is by not having you um, go reinvent a wheel or come up with the calendar. So take this and plug and play. Um, promoting your newsletters, you know, when to host an event, post flyers, send text messages, emails. If it's not on here, drop it in the chat. Hey, Dooney, you know what? We did this and this was really successful. We'll add it to the list and we're happy to create content, copy and artwork to facilitate supporting your ideas. Next slide, please. So here's an example of a, a promotional calendar that we put together. Again, just giving you some kind of idea of how you can plan your efforts. Um, and if you're like, oh, Dooney, I'm slammed. We want to do this. We're going to make time for this. But um, we don't know if we can get all these things done. Just challenge yourself to do what you can and do something every week. You'll notice that we have thunderclaps built into this. If you are a social media person, Thunderclap is familiar to you if you are not. It's just a group um, effort where we send a text message about the same topic out on the same day, preferably at the same time, to make the biggest splash that we can in the media, um, in the social media space. And so we've planned a few so that we could all be tweeting the same thing, posting the same things at the same time so that many people learn about this program. It's also a really great way to enhance your following and get people to notice your organization and the good work you're doing. We believe in um, reciprocal sharing. So if you have something going on, we want to share your event and we also want you to share our information. Also, it enhances your likes and who doesn't love a good influencer these days, right? Um, so please make sure you put these dates down on your calendar. We're going to blink. It's going to be October and we're going to be off and running. So as you can see that that last week of September, first day of um, October is going to be pretty intense. We're also planning to have the press conference to announce all of this information on the 1st of um, October. And then we'll have a follow up media op where um, our bureau chief is gonna be on Univision to um, speak about the emergency rental assistance program as well as a press release. So if you are interested in being a part of our press announcement to say, hey, XYZ is supporting the county's rental assistance program, we're happy to facilitate that for you as well. Next slide, please. And here's an example of an event. So Dooney, you said throw an event. What do you, what do you mean? How do I throw an event? to talk about this. So we pulled together again, some framing for you so that you can see um, um, an example of how you can do something like this. Again, really quick and easy, low hanging fruit. You can plug and play, take this model and make it your own, find your own local library and um, host your own event. Um, there's computers there and 
There's plenty of um, resources at your fingertips. It also gives you a really big win when you're reporting about the work that you've done to um, support the county's outreach efforts. But let's look inside the toolkit real quick so that you know what to get, um, expect when you get it. So we have the talking points and the FAQ. So that's if anyone asks you questions, if anyone um, applies and, and just needs some type of follow up, you've got kind of your Bible playbook um, that you can reference to get to um, the information that you need. So use those talking points in FAQ as your, um, as your guide to one, get familiar with what people might ask, and it, it just helps you become more knowledgeable when you talk about the program. And two, because it's, it's gonna help you facilitate engagement between getting people successfully through the application process. Um, we also have the ready to use promotional tools, and we did keep in mind the visuals. People relate to, to people who look like them, and some people just like imagery, strong images. And so all of the toolkits have something that represents um, your organization. So um, we have, when I say we've got the gamut covered, we got it covered and we are getting things translated just like we have in the past in Korean, Arabic, Spanish, Polish, Mandarin, Yoruba, and um, Hindi. So we will have, a variety of languages and a variety of um, multicultural image imagery that um, is in the toolkits. Some we won't have um, the diverse images. If you really feel like you need that, please let me know. We're happy to make the accommodation. We really want you to feel connected to what you're promoting because it is important for all of us to be successful in our efforts. And you'll all each get a link to the toolkit which will be, I believe, on Dropbox like it was before. And um, those of you who use the toolkit before, if you could take a moment and drop in the chat your feelings about it. Was it helpful? Were there things that we could improve on? Um, I'd love if you all could take a moment and drop in the chat how you felt about the previous toolkit for those of you who are returning to us. Next slide, please. I recognize I've been talking a lot. We have just a few more slides to go. Um, and I promise we're going to pause and take all of your questions. Um, but I want to reiterate some best practices because I do think that's important. Um, make sure your target audience um, is identified. You don't want to just, you know, you, I don't know if we walk into a homeowner's forum and talk about rental assistance, right? So just make sure you're reaching out to an audience that's relevant. I know earlier I said far and wide to anyone. I am a homeowner, but if you shared this with me, I know plenty of people who might rent, so I'd be happy to pass it along. But when you're really making that robust push, think about the spaces that your messaging is going to be in. Using multiple channels is important because, again, it allows you to see what sticks, what lands, mm -hmm. and maybe where there might be a miss. Sometimes technology fails us and we're um, left to that old brick and mortar. Um, we also know that um, some of our immigrant residents, they don't circulate the way a lot of us who you know, are, are accustomed to just being out and about in certain spaces. Um, I know in my community, folks rely on the church, folks rely on schools. Um, I know my Latinx brothers and sisters, you know, you can, a lot of business goes down at the bodega. So get out there and get into the spaces where you know people are going to be so that people get access to this information. Um, I also know some of my, my um, people who are in Palos Heights or Palos Hills um, who are from the Islamic communities. So there, there's a variety of ways you can reach a variety of people, get out, and go into those spaces far and wide. Make it easy for people. Um, if they don't have a computer, that's where the, that library helps out. And, and lean on each other and ask questions because some of you who've done this before might have tricks of the trade down and um, can offer a hand up to someone who, who might need a little bit of a boost. Start planning today. Again, all of you took an important step because you were here with us. We could not thank you more for that. Um, for being here. Um, it's a huge piece of the puzzle, getting informed and understanding what's next. And let us know if it's working. If something we're doing is not working and does not fit, please let us know. We promise you it will only make better the experience for everyone. We are not the experts. That's why we have you in the room. And our goal is to work with experts so that we can do better together. So um, 
please always give feedback. It to me is one of the best things you can do to help us um, be stronger in our work. I'm going to turn it back over to Rex, who's going to talk yep. to you a little bit more about how we targeted our um, population this time around. Take it over, Rex. Thank you. Thank you, Dooney. Um, okay, so I just want to uh, share with you all some uh, some analysis that we did to help uh, with recommended targeting for ERA 2's marketing and outreach effort. So as we got closer to the close of ERA round one, we did an analysis of the applications that we had received, and we found that Hispanic and Asian households applied for emergency rental assistance at lower levels than other ethnic and racial groups in Cook County. In addition to that, we, we looked at the Cook County municipalities that had the lowest saturation, which means a low proportion of applications despite large and large low income po um, populations. Uh, from there, we were able to identify 30 municipalities that we hope to target better for marketing and outreach during ERA round two. So what we're asking is that you take a look at these communities and consider which of them might be already in your footprint of operations or might be adjacent to where you conduct activities normally um, and to consider how you might be able to increase your outreach activities in these in these municipalities. Um, in addition to this list, though, located in our appendix of this slide, we've included all the other Cook County municipalities that fall under the 50% very low income level or the 80% low income level, uh, regardless of, of ERA-1 applications and, and demographics, because these are still priority communities. And if you're already operating uh, in, those, in those neighborhoods, in those municipalities, we want you to continue. Um, lastly, uh, Dooney mentioned one of the best practices is feedback. So we are asking you to give us feedback on the marketing efforts. So we are providing this link to a uh, Microsoft Forms, which we are going to ask your, you to fill out on a weekly basis. So that's, that's only going to last for the duration of the application portal. But the kind of information that we're looking for is the activities that you're doing, the number uh, of advertisements and posts and emails that you're putting out there, the number of flyers and door hangers that you've hung, um, and, and additional feedback that can help us make adjustments so, so that we can continue to enhance our marketing and outreach uh, within the suburban Cook County region where, where we, need to, um, we need to get the word out the most. Uh, so with that, I am going to pass it over to Julie Caviar, who is going to shift gears a little bit and give you just a little bit of um, information on uh, Cook County legal aid. Hi, thank you so much, Rex. I appreciate it. Um, Julie Caviar, I'm chief of staff to Cook County Commissioner Scott Britton, who represents the 14th district, which is the northern, uh, central, and, and eastern suburbs. Um, I'm grateful, thank you, um, for giving me just a few moments here to talk about two policies that taken in tandem with the early rental assistance are going to be tools that will truly keep people um, in their homes. So with the funding, as well as these policies, um, be able to stave off to some tsunamis of evictions. The first one, next slide, please. Um, the first one that I'm going to talk about is the Residential Tenant Landlord Ordinance, um, which passed earlier this year, written in part by my boss, Commissioner Scott Britton, and it provides standardized rules of engagement for landlords and their tenants for the approximately 250,000 renter households in suburban Cook County that until this year lacked any kind of tenants' rights ordinance. Um, as I mentioned, it's a roadmap for the rights, responsibilities, and remedies. Um, it focuses on renters in financial crisis who are unable to pay rent, the conduct of landlords, for example, um, how they can file evictions, how to handle um, abandoned property, um, how security deposits are supposed to be handled, as well as the conditions of the home um, and responsibilities and remedies for ensuring habitability of that home. These are just a few of the key tenants' rights that are included in the RTLO. 
Um, the first, which I think is particularly cool and, and definitely relevant to the ERA today, um, is this one-time pay-to-stay provision, which allows tenants to clear their evictions um, and not have it go on their record with this one-time pay-to-stay provision. So you can see how powerful that can be to keep people homes with the rental assistance that can be provided. Um, other protections include um, against unreasonable fees, such as, uh, you know, renaming security deposits as move-in fees to evade returning them, making sure that rent is, is considered rent and doesn't go to late fees. Um, it prohibits lease terms that would otherwise be completely um, unconscionable, such as confession of judgment, which is a term that landlords use to, if they accuse a renter of something, as you all know, they have to assume guilt. So that is now illegal under the RTLO. As I mentioned, it outlines um, it outlines late fees and how much they can actually be as a percentage of the rent um, and ensures again that that rent goes to rent so you don't have late fees piling up um, that can that can really force people out into evictions. It also improves protections for when renters can withhold rent um, for, for for example for repairs that have not been made or for utilities that are not offered. Um, it codifies that lockouts are illegal, um, which provides additional support for lawyers um, who are supporting tenants in those cases when, when lockouts have been made or, or locks have been changed. Um, it also has a litany of protections around security deposits to make sure that they actually get returned in a timely manner so that renters can use those needed funding for their next home. Um, it also restricts retaliatory conduct that we know can force um, tenants to to, to be in a horrible situations or to leave their home. Um, so that's, that's really exciting about the RTLO. And again, if there's any questions, please feel free to reach out to Scott Britton's office. We're happy to answer them. The second policy that we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about real quick is the uh, Cook County Legal Aid for Housing and Debt. And so now we've got this funding and now we have all of these great new policies and protections and remedies for tenants. Where the rubber meets the road is really in the courtroom and that's where CLAD comes in. Um, it provides, um, legal assistance, so lawyers, um, mediation, counseling, case management, and connections to services like the ARA um, to help resolve issues before they go to a judge. This is for tenants or landlords who are facing eviction. So if you're a renter and your landlord's trying to evict you, or you're a landlord and you don't have a lawyer represented, we want to make sure that everyone has equal representation um, and a chance to get these issues resolved. For um, homeowner, homeowners who may have be underwater on their mortgages or have property tax payments or deed issues, this can be for you, as well as for residents who may have unresolved debt issues, such as with a credit card, or if someone owes you money and you need real legal representation to file that lawsuit. Um, again, this helps get, we think, getting money in your pocket and resolving those issues before going to a judge, which really can be very expensive and time consuming. Through a wonderful network of community partners, these services are available in a number of languages, including um, Spanish and Polish. And so with the courts now open, we know we're expecting a tsunami of evictions, which is why all these programs are now in place. To the landlords, we say evictions are really expensive and early resolution means money in your pocket. Um, we know in Cook County that filing an eviction can cost landlords upwards of $700 that's not accounting for attorney's fees. Um, and soliciting a new tenant can cost 2,500. And so we really encourage landlords to use these mediation programs available to resolve these cases um, and keep tenants housed. Just a couple of stats on how the CLAD program has been working so far. The hotline, um, so you can see that through January, there was 11, about 1,100 people served. Since the launch in November through August, the hotline has received 13,590 calls, and that's steadily risen. And so now we're receiving the hotline, the CLAD hotline is receiving over 2,500 calls every month. And so you can see the need is incredibly great. So please continue to send folks there. Um, our court based, the early resolution program um, has had over 2,000 referrals. Um, and 84% of those have received legal assistance. Again, the need is great, lawyers are available, um, and about 60% of those cases were for eviction and 40% were for consumer debt. Um, in addition, uh, we're seeing a good split between Chicago and suburban residents using this program, about 60% of the, of the calls coming in from Chicago and about 40% coming in from the suburbs. Um, please, cookcountylegalaid.org. Um, there's also a hotline, which you'll see on that on that website as well. That's 
5763, and that is staffed by Real Humans, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. So again, if there's any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, and I will put my email in the chat. Thank you. Thanks so much, Julie, Rex, and Carl. This is the best part of the presentation. We get to hear from all of you. Um, you can either raise your hand. I see Crystal Green's got her hand up. So let's start taking some questions and um, diving into this space and, and hopefully getting um, some clarity for folks. So since I see Crystal Green, I'm gonna start with Crystal. Um, Leonor, um, unmute uh, folks as we call their names. Crystal, you're up. Hi, my question is, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Okay. My question is, first, I didn't get the phone number that you were giving out, Julie. Um, I didn't catch that number. If you could repeat that, if you would. Absolutely. Um, that's 855-956-5763. And the website is cookcountylegalaid.org. Okay, so my question, my other question is for those applicants who are now homeless, I saw that they all are doing a um, campaign for that as well. How do they give information like their address? Um, any other information that you guys considered before? Because in the first campaign when we did it, they had the landlord's information and everything these people have been displaced during COVID and have no idea what to do so is Absolutely. that gonna be so Carl I'm gonna toss this one over to you and do we yeah, have... I'm gonna start out but Cheryl Seelig our, our program administrator um on the technical side is also on the on the line on the conference call so I'm gonna ask her to sort of tie in on this one I don't know Thank if the, I don't know if we have the perfect answer because what we're asking them to do is to um, still come in via the electronic system. And if they've determined that they have a, a new address, that would be the address they would be putting into the um, into the system for correspondence. But it's still a requirement they have an email address sign in to go into that portal. And that sort of logs them in. Can I add to that too? Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Um, just to answer to to add, we're hoping that with people who are in that situation where they no longer have an address, they are able to still go into the portal and um, apply and say there will be a place for them to indicate that so that they're seeking uh, like a security deposit and forward rent. But we are asking that they do try to identify what the, the new house home will be, right? Because legally in the bill, you are required to have a rental obligation. Um, that's from the treasury. So there is a need for them to, we can't give them the funds without understanding or knowing where they are planning on living. So if you are working with a client who was in that situation, my advice would be to work with them to identify a lease and a potential landlord and then hack would work in that you know in that unique situation hack would work with the landlord to determine you know that to like let them know that they are going to be able to receive a certain amount of funds for current future and security deposit so that could help them get started and that's where um when carl was talking about earlier needing to have at least a six month rent again that's in the faq so the treasury so they would need to identify a lease that is at least six months or longer um and 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 that because we were trying to you know obviously set up and treasury's trying to establish more long-term situations um so that would be my thought is how you could help a client in that situation thank you so much for that ashanta crystal did that answer your question that did answer my question thanks guys oh no worries are there any more questions or um comments anything that you want to share I want to lift up again while we're waiting on someone to raise their hand or you can drop your questions in the chat if you're feeling a little camera and um, audible shy. We're OK with that. We'll take chat questions. Um, the reporting piece that Rex covered in the slide 
where we, we, we are asking you to fill out the form document, that lets us know that what we're doing is working and most importantly that you all are out there um, investing valuable time in this effort. So please make sure you designate a staff member to track all of your activities so that we are able to really look at and have a more informed um, set of data so that when we move forward and continue to roll out and, and work in this space, we can see where the um, information is landing and um, have some idea of how successful we've been in this space. Any more questions, comments? Do any when I'm gonna get my toolkit? Anything? All right. So, um, Lolita, I see you. Your hand is up. Talk to us, Lolita. Okay. Can you hear me? I think I got the new loud and clear. You sound wonderful. Okay. So, um, I was wondering. I had to send out a jot form monthly for something like that. Is this going to be a jot? form or um or do you want this um it's submitted on a certain day of the week or what I, I know i'll probably be responsible for doing it for our agency and just want to submit it on time so sure um rex ashanta do you want to speak to that piece please yes um i was just going to jump in i was going to say if we we're hoping that you would submit it on fridays or on monday so the latest, you know, if you obviously it's for a full week of uh, of activity. So we're hoping by the end of day on Monday, you would be able to fill that out. And when you go into the form, you'll see there there it asks for the date of the report. Um, so you would just select the Friday, and this is all in the report. Um, the directions are there. You would just submit the uh, enter the Friday of the weekend in which you're you know uh, reporting your at your marketing activities. <clears throat> And we'll make sure to put this in the follow-up okay, thank email you. too. No thank you for that, Ashanta. Thanks for that question, Lolita. Will everyone receive the link to the toolkit or is it being sent to a particular contact within each organization? That question comes from Sandra Wells. I'm gonna cover that one. Um, we are, yes, we're gonna share the toolkit with everyone who's on this call today. So you will get an email from myself um, or Ashanta. Um, I think it's me, right, Ashanta? I've been emailing you all, so I, I believe it's going to continue in that form or fashion. Um, and I'll make sure you get the link to the toolkit. We'll be updating it, so you don't need to do anything other than just log in, and I'll send you a note and say, hey, we've added the new translations to the folder. We're in the process of getting everything translated now, so when you do get the toolkit, if something's missing, just give it a few days and know that it's going to be populated at some point take your time and go through the toolkit there's a lot of information in there you can get lost so just really we try to package it in a way that helps you kind of have the best and most efficient experience so that you're not overwhelmed by the information but it is important to become familiar with it um so please make sure of that um anita wants to know if we'll be sharing a copy of this presentation i don't see why not i'll turn it over to rex to make me an honest woman rex uh, yes, we will send out um, follow up emails that are going to have uh, an attachment with these slides and then we will have links to some of these key uh, tools. So you'll have a link that's going to go take you to the reporting form. There, there will be a link for, you know, to the, the portal itself, our landing platform for the Cook County website, and we will also have a link to the two webinar recordings. And thanks, Anita, for that question, and Ashanta for getting it answered so quickly in the chat. I'm sorry I missed that. Um, but we got to hear Rex's voice again, right? Um, any more questions? Um, I don't see any other hands up before I, I give everybody seven minutes of their time back. <laughs> All right, going once, going twice. If you can't think of it right now, we're always around after. Um, these things and happy to answer your questions. Please do not hesitate to email us. Um, you've only we've only sent out two communications. One was to invite you to this meeting, and the second was the actual meeting invite. I know some of you were like, I wasn't on the email. Hopefully, we have everybody now. If your colleague or or someone that you know is missing um, wasn't included and you didn't see them here today, share the information with them. Tell them to get in touch with us so we can make sure that we have their contact information. Other than that, yes, Crystal. 
Okay, I'm sorry. Oh God! Before we were using our community partner code, is that still going to be the same code going forward in this campaign? Shanta, Carl, Cheryl. Oh, I'm sorry, it was questions in the um chat. In the what chat, no, the no worries. Again? Crystal wants to know if we're using the same community code that we used before, or are we getting new community codes for our organizations to use this time around? We should come back to you on that one because this is a new funding source. And okay. so we need to make sure we get you the right stream. Okay. And All right, um, thank you. no worries, Crystal. And then um, Sandra, you said we didn't say when the toolkit link would be sent. So when that PowerPoint comes over to you, everything that you saw in the presentation is clickable. You'll have everything you need right there. The only difference will be that we'll be loading documents into the toolkit. So we're getting things translated. So once they're ready, you'll notice those folders populating. So I would say, um, say if we get it out to you today, um, we'll definitely get it out to you before next Monday. So um, once you have it, just go in and just become familiar with um, the information. No worries, you're very welcome, Sandra. Okay. If that is everything, um, enjoy five more minutes on the docket. I hope you use it wisely. <laughs> Go get some coffee or whatever it is that makes you shine and feel happy. You all certainly made me happy today because you showed up. Um, I really appreciate everything that you've done. Barbara, I see it would be great to send all questions and answers um, toolkit. I don't know if I'm deciphering your question properly. Can someone help me out? It would be great to send all questions and answers toolkit question mark. Barbara, you want to unmute and tell us what you mean? Or retype your question? All right, Barbara. Uh, gonna... I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, oh, I was no, just no, talking no. about there seems to be some questions in the box over here. And I know that a lot of times it's helpful when we see you know, some, some typical questions that clients ask and then there's an answer. You know, if there's something like that already readily available, that would be great if, if that's a part of the toolkit. So yes, there's FAQ. Oh, sorry, go Danny, I didn't go ahead, cut no, you off. Go ahead, Ashanta, please. Say there are FAQs in the toolkit and our team is um, collecting the questions from, you know, both of our webinars and adding, you know, seeing where we need to add to the FAQ based on the questions that you all are asking. Thank you. Perfect, thank you so much. All right, to that tune, everybody have a good afternoon. Talk to you soon, bye. Thank you so much, Rex, Ashanta, Carl, Julie, and Leonore for making everything run so smoothly today. I appreciate all of you, bye. Thank you. Thanks, Jimmy. Bye, thank, thank you. you. Bye, thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.